People at Work, The Farmer, first published in 1963, a ladybird book. All farmers are very busy men, but they are not all busy doing the same kind of work. A long time ago, all farms were worked in the same way. They were called mixed farms. The farmer grew some crops and kept some animals. And today, some farmers still run mixed farms, but others run their farms in a special way. Stock farmers buy very good animals and just rear cows or sheep or pigs. Other farmers spend all their time growing crops. They are all farmers, whatever they grow or rear. The farmer who tills the land and gets crops from it is called an arable farmer. He grows corn crops like wheat, barley and oats. The wheat is made into flour, breakfast foods and animal food. Barley is used by brewers to make beer and is also made into animal food. Oats are made into porridge and animal food. The arable farmer grows root crops like potatoes, sugar beet, turnips and mangolds. He grows other vegetable crops for greengrocers to sell, for canning factories to can and for animal food. The arable farmer must get the land ready, sow the seeds, tend the young plants and harvest the crop. First of all the farmer ploughs the land. He pulls the plough behind a tractor. The plough usually has three ploughshares and these cut into the soil and turn it over. The cuts are called furrows. All farmers like to plough good straight furrows. When the fields are ploughed, the frost, the wind, the sun and the rain all help to break up the soil. The farmer in the picture is using a cultivator to break up the lumps of soil. Then he uses a harrow to level the soil and make a fine tilth. One kind of harrow has a zigzag metal frame with short metal spikes which stick into the ground. A set of three of these harrows can be pulled behind a tractor. Another kind of harrow is a disc harrow. This has many sharp edged discs like wheels. These cut up heavy soil. When the soil has been harrowed, it is ready for the seed to be sown. Long ago, farmers had to scatter seed by hand. Today, a machine called a seed drill is used. This is a long box on wheels with pipes leading down to the soil. The farmer tows the seed drill behind a tractor and sets the seeds in neat rows. The farmer in the picture is dragging a spiked harrow behind the seed drill to cover the seeds with soil. When the young plants are growing, the farmer sprays them to kill the weeds and pests. This helps to grow better crops. The hay harvest is the beginning of a very busy time on many farms. To cut the grass, a mowing machine is towed behind a tractor. Some farmers cut the grass when it is young and press it down in a pit. Then they add molasses, a sort of black treacle, and this helps to make silage. Silage is a very good winter food for cows. Other farms leave the grass in the fields to dry. Dry grass is called hay and is a useful winter food for animals. Most farmers use baling machines to pick up the hay. The baling machine moves up and down the field, picking up the hay and at the same time pressing it and tying it into neat bales. Then the bales are loaded onto a trailer and are taken away to be stacked in barns ready for the winter. Dried corn stems, called straw, can also be picked up by this machine and pressed and baled in the same way. The straw is also stored by the farmer and is used as bedding for the animals. 
few years ago, the farmer needed several machines, many men and a lot of time to harvest his corn. The corn was cut and tied into sheaves by a reaper binder. These sheaves were put into piles called stooks and left to dry. And when the corn sheaves were dry, they were taken and stacked near the farm. Later in the year, the corn was passed through a machine called a threshing machine. The threshing machine separated the grains of corn from the straw and from the outer coverings called chaff. Today, the farmer has one machine to harvest his corn. This machine is called a combine harvester. It cuts and threshes the corn. The combine harvester is a large machine which may be driven and worked by one man. At the front of the machine are flails or arms which draw the corn onto the cutters. The corn then passes up a moving belt into the box-like body of the machine. The threshing is done inside the combine harvester, which separates the corn into straw, chaff and grain. The threshing is done as the harvester moves along. The chaff and the straw fall from the machine onto the ground. Some smaller combine harvesters pour the grain into sacks. These sacks are held ready by one or two men. And when they are full, the sacks are tied and dropped in the field and they are then collected by a tractor and trailer. Large harvesters store the grain in a bin until a box trailer comes alongside. Then the grain is allowed to flow from the bin into the box trailer. The farmer who keeps animals must also grow these crops which help to feed them in the winter. He grows beans, mangoes, turnips and swedes, beet and kale. All these are good food for animals. Farmers also grow crops for us to eat. They grow fields of potatoes and have special machines for planting them and lifting them out of the ground. In the picture, you'll see a machine which lifts the potatoes out of the ground and leaves them on the surface to be collected. Fields of peas, sprouts and cabbages are also planted. Some farmers grow sugar beet. When the farmer lifts the sugar beet, he cuts off the plant tops. After these tops have wilted, they're good food for cattle. The sugar beet is taken to the factory and sugar is made from it. In some parts of the country, farmers grow hops. The hop fields have high hedges around them to break the wind. The farmers put up tall posts in the field and stretch wires on them. The hops grow up the wires. Hops are used to make beer. Dairy farmers keep herds of cows. They're kept mainly for the milk they give, not so much for their meat. Dairy cows like Jerseys, Frisians and Ayrshire's are lean looking cows with big bones. The farmer can get up to six or seven gallons a day from a good milking cow. Jersey cows give less milk, but it is more creamy. The more milk a cow gives, the more water it must drink. A cow will drink up to 10 gallons of water a day. At one time, cows were milked by hand. The farmer sat on his three-legged stool by the side of each cow and milked it. He could only milk one cow at a time, so milking filled a large part of his day. Today, on most farms, the cows are milked by a milking machine. Twice a day at milking time, the cows are led to the milking shed. The shed is kept very clean. The walls are often tiled and the concrete floor is washed every day. The dairy farmer has to see that everything he uses for milking is very clean. The milking machinery, the milk cooler and the churns are cleaned with boiling water or steam. All cows are tested to see that they are in good health. This means that the milk is pure and fit for us to drink. 
On a large dairy farm, the farmer has a cowman who looks after the herd. At milking times, he opens the milking shed doors and each cow walks to its own stall. The cowman washes the sides of the cow and its udder. Rubber cups are fixed to the teats of the cow's udder and the milking machine is started. This sucks the milk from the cow through the pipes. The milk is then passed over the cooler and into churns. The churns are put near the farm gate to be collected by the lorry from the dairy company. At large dairies, the milk is bottled or made into cheese or butter. Some of the milk is dried and made into milk powder. Some farmers are stock farmers. They keep cows and bullocks for their beef. Good beef animals like Shorthorns, Herefords and Aberdeen Angus are not as bony as dairy cows. Usually these farmers buy bull calves from the dairy farmers who only wish to keep cows. After these calves have been fattened for about two years, they are then sold to a butcher. Some farmers keep Frisian and Shorthorn cows. They are very useful cows as they are good milkers and can also be sold for beef. Sheep farmers in this country keep sheep mainly for the purpose of breeding lambs. These lambs are later sold for meat. The female sheep has, are called ewes and each ewe has one or two lambs each year. These farmers often live in hilly districts. There the land is too difficult to farm in any other way. The sheep can climb the steep slopes and eat the short grass which they like. The farmer brings the sheep down from the hills for the winter. Often he sells the lambs to other farmers who fatten them up on lower pastures. The sheep farmer is busy with his flock all year round. Sheep easily become ill and a good shepherd must watch each one carefully. He often has a sheepdog to help him look after the flock. The lambs are born early in spring and the farmer has to spend most of his time with the ewes and the lambs. When the lambs are old enough, the farmer has to arrange for them to be injected against disease. Lambs also have their tails shortened. This helps to keep them clean. Usually, sheep and lambs are dipped once a year. The farmer has a deep trough filled with disinfectant. The sheep are driven into a pen near the deep end of the trough. They are then pushed through the trough, one after another. As they scramble through, a man with a pole pushes the sheep's head under. This makes sure that every part of the eat sheep has been disinfected. This dipping helps to keep the sheep free from insects, like the blowfly, which could harm them. In May or June, the weather is warmer and the farmer can begin shearing his sheep. This means that each sheep has its wool, or fleece, cut off. This is done on clean ground or on a wooden floor to keep the fleece clean. The fleece is worth more if it's clean. The farmer uses electric clippers to cut off the fleece. He quickly turns the sheep over and holds it with his knees. A few quick strokes and the fleece comes off in one piece. The sheep look, runs away looking quite strange and much smaller. Pig farmers breed and rear pigs. They keep good sows or mother pigs and from them they get litters of piglets. The piglets are fed carefully on pig meal. They are given just enough to help them grow to the right size. Too much food makes them fat and most people do not like fat pork and bacon. When they are big enough for the pigs to be sold to the butcher or pork, or to the bacon factory to be turned into bacon. Some farmers keep hens for the eggs they lay. Sometimes the hens live in batteries. 
These are cages in which the hens live from the age of six months. Other hens may be kept in deep litter. This means that they live in large sheds with plenty of chopped straw on the ground. In batteries and deep litter, the hens are kept warm, well fed and have plenty of light. Some farmers keep poultry to be eaten as table birds. These birds are called broilers. They are well fed and are ready for the shops in about 10 or 12 weeks. A cattle market is held every week at a town in the farming district. Most farmers sell some of their animals at the market. The animals are put in pens where other farmers can examine them before they buy. All the things that a farmer wants to buy can be found in the market. You can buy animals, feeding troughs, tools, tractors and even large machines. Farmers enjoy a day at the market. There they meet other farmers and friends. They talk about their work and their problems and get all the latest farming news. <laughs>